PhD, the highest degree in this world, and is pursuing your PhD from India is the right decision. No worries, I was also in the same situation when I was planning to start my PhD. And in this video, we are going to analyze each and everything in detail with a realistic fact. So stay tuned. Hello everyone, the people, those who are new to this channel, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Sonam Kalonia and I have completed my master from Indian Institute of Technology, Bhuvneshwar. And currently, I'm pursuing my PhD from Leipzig University, Germany. On this YouTube channel, I usually make videos in comparison between Indian and European education system. So don't forget to press the bell icon before starting the video. So before starting your PhD, you really need to think about the time reference. Because in India, you require at least 5 years to complete your PhD degree. And if you are pursuing it from some higher institute like IIC Bangalore, IIT Kanpur and IIT Madras, then it's very common that you receive your degree even after 6 years. And if you are a person who have no educational gap, then I guess your age after completing master degree is around 23 to 24 years. And if you enroll yourself into PhD degree just after that, then your age after PhD is around 30. And according to the Google search, mostly people receive their PhD degree in the age of 30 to 37. Talking about the monthly stipend in India, it's around 30 to 35,000. And if you are having PMRF, then your stipend is around 70,000. But mostly people receive 30 to 35,000 only. Now think about some realistic fact that time period of your life where you are having maximum energy, maximum potential that is 20 to 30 and at that time of period you are receiving 30,000 per month which is like nothing. And if we assume that you are saving 10,000 per month then over the year your saving is 120,000 and after 5 years your saving is 6 lakh. And the age of 30 where you are having big dreams of getting married, having kids, having your own house, doing something for your parents. At that time, your saving is only 6 lakh, which is nothing. In India, 36.6 million students enrolled into various higher education courses and 79% of them involved into undergraduate program. And among them, only 0.5% of students are enrolled into PhD program but trust me that's a lot because this makes India globally ranked at fourth position in producing more than 24,000 PhD graduate per year and the first rank is secured by US which produced more than 67,000 PhD graduate per year and the second position goes to Germany which produced 28,000 and then after Great Britain with 25,000 per year. Now, if you assume the same condition for European countries, then your age after master is 23 to 24. Because you require 3 to 4 years to complete your PhD, your age after PhD is around 27 and 28 years. And if we talk about the stipend, because of the currency difference, your stipend is more than a lakh. And it also depends upon the kind of scholarship which you are receiving. So, if we suppose that you save monthly, 40 to 50,000, then within a year your saving is 6 lakh. Which means your saving after completing 5 years of PhD in India is equal to the saving of 1 year if you pursue your PhD from some European universities. Coming from a middle class family, it's always a dream to see these country and their cultures. But visiting here as a tourist is way more expensive. So it's always better to come as a student because it's way more cheaper. Also, all these European countries are interconnected, so you don't need any extra visa to visit them. And one of the biggest opportunity is that you are allowed to attend the international conferences, which give you more exposure and more idea what people are doing all over the world and what kind of working environment they have. Also, these international conferences helps you in making friends and connections so that they people can also help you if in case you stuck in your research. So basically, if you pursue your PhD from these European countries, you have more time, more exposure and more money. I hope this video is informative for you and I have given you enough exposure from where you should pursue your PhD, either from India or from abroad. Even though if you have any question, you can write in the comment box and I read every comment very carefully and try to answer as soon as possible. So see you in the next video. Till then, bye bye and take care.